Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss concentrates and its role in dairy cattle rations. Let's first define what a concentrate or concentrates are. These feeds contain less than 18% crude fiber, which is comparable to about 21% acid detergent fiber. So they are low fiber, high starch, high energy containing feedstuffs. They also contain high levels of nutrients, such things as protein, fats, or energy per unit of weight or dry matter. Usually concentrates, especially in Illinois and the Midwest, are more expensive per unit of dry matter compared to forages. And finally, we feed concentrates to dairy cattle that need higher nutrients, such as high producing cows, rapidly growing heifers. The function of concentrates are to add concentrated sources of nutrients to increase the nutrient density of a ration for high producing or high required animals. Secondly, it can serve as a carrier of needed micronutrients, such as trace minerals and vitamins. Third, concentrates can increase dry matter intake because of their higher and faster rates of passage due to smaller particle size and more rapid fermentation and digestion rates in the track itself. And finally, many concentrates can improve palatability of the ration because of their taste or particle size. We can classify concentrates in several different groups or categories. The first one would be grain energy. This concentrate would contain less than 20% crude protein on a dry matter base and still contain over 0.8 mcals per pound of dry matter. Good examples of grain energy would be shell corn or barley or wheat or oats. The second category or classification would be a protein supplement. These feeds would be over 20% crude protein and still be over 0.8 mcals of net energy per pound of dry matter. Soybean meal and corn distiller's grains would be good examples of a protein supplement. The third category will be called fats and oils. These feeds contain over 50% fat or oil, so tallow or vegetable oil would fall into this category. The fourth category would be mineral supplements. These concentrates would contain over 70% ash or mineral. Dicalcium, phosphate, and salt would be good examples of this classification. The fifth one would be vitamin supplements. These concentrates contain very high levels of one or more key vitamins for the dairy animal. For example, a vitamin A, D, and E premix containing 10 million units of vitamin A, 3 million units of vitamin D, and 15,000 international units of vitamin E per pound would be an example of a typical A, D, and E premix. Or you could get a straight vitamin E premix, which would contain 25,000 IUs per pound of supplement or concentrate fed. The sixth classification would be additives. Additives are feeds that are included in a ration for a non-nutrient role. Good examples would be sodium bicarb. It is added to the ration to buffer the rumen. Yeast culture, another additive, stabilizes the rumen fermentation but does not provide direct sources of nutrients in significant quantities. The third one would be an ionophore, which improves growth and feed efficiency in replacement heifers. Let's now discuss some feeding guidelines for dairy cows. Let's take a look at large breed cows first. Holsteins and Brown Swiss, we would feed one pound of concentrate on an as-is or air-dry basis or 90% dry matter base for every three pounds of milk above the forage nutrient levels being provided. For a small breed cow, such as Jersey or Guernsey, we would feed one pound of air dry concentrate or 90% dry matter for each two pounds of milk above the forage nutrient needs or levels. The reason for a higher level of concentrate for Jerseys and Guernseys is because their milk is much richer in nutrients, in this case fat and protein, and they can eat less forage due to their body size. Now let's do an example of concentrate feeding. We'll take a Holstein cow producing 80 pounds of milk. Remember, our thumb rule is 3 to 1. So we would take and divide 3 into 80 pounds, and that will end up at 26 to 27 pounds of concentrate being fed to that cow each day. Now let's look at a protein supplementation guideline. The thumb rule is to feed 1 pound of protein supplement per 10 pounds of milk over the protein being provided by the basal ration. Remember, the basal ration will include all the forages and grain energy concentrates. In this example, our base ration, which consists of forages and grain for a Holstein cow, can support 40 pounds of milk. Now, our Holstein cow is producing 60 pounds of milk. 
Therefore, we are 20 pounds over the basal protein being provided in the ration. We divide that by 10, and this cow would get 2 pounds of additional protein supplement, either top-dressed or fed in some other portion of the feeding program. The second protein guideline is when we have to make room in the ration by taking other dry matter out. Here's the guideline. Feed one pound of protein supplement for each five pounds of milk when the additional protein replaces one pound of dry matter coming from either forages, grains, or other feed sources in the diet. Let's go back to our previous example. We'll take our Holstein cow producing now 80 pounds of milk, but she can't eat any more dry matter. So we'll go back and determine how much protein we have. Remember, she will feed her 4 pounds more protein because we have 80 pounds more milk minus the 60 we calculated earlier, which is 20 pounds more milk divided by 5. That means we need an additional 4 pounds of protein to go from 60 to 80 pounds of milk. Now remember, however, the total amount will be 6 pounds. 4 pounds to go from 60 to 80 pounds of milk. And remember, the base to go from 40 to 60 was an additional 2 pounds. Therefore, this Holstein cow needs 6 pounds of additional protein supplement to support 80 pounds of milk with intended intakes. Mineral Guidelines. Guideline 1. Feed 1 ounce of salt for maintenance, plus 1 ounce of salt for every 30 pounds of milk. Guideline 2. Feed about 1 tenth pound of a mineral supplement for every 20 pounds of milk. A mineral supplement would be like dicalcium phosphate or a 1 to 1 mineral, such as a 1717, which means 17% 17 calcium, 17% phosphorus, and is commercially produced by a feed company. Let's go back and visit our Holstein cow producing 80 pounds of milk. 80 pounds of milk, she would receive 4 ounces of salt, which would be a quarter of a pound of salt, and 4 tenths of a pound of mineral supplement. Finally, the concentrate system. How do we deliver concentrates to dairy cows? And there are a number of different systems available in Illinois and in the United States. The old system historically fed when we had small herd sizes, was to top dress, which meant each cow was in a stanchion or stall, and we would give her each supplement based on her need. So we would top dress this on top of her silage or other feedstuffs. We could top dress her grain, her protein, her minerals, her vitamins, and her additives. So we could top dress three to five different products per feeding. And if we feed the cows two or three times a day, you can see a number of different ways and to wings and a number of different times we have to feed this cow. But this is very exact. We feed each cow individually exactly what we calculate she needs to have her given level of production or performance. A second way is to dispense this concentrate through an electronic grain feeder. Electronic grain feeder identifies the cow. We have computerized her and told the feeder how much supplement concentrates to feed to this cow. And we can dispense anywhere from one to four different concentrate mixtures to this cow. These units typically cost twenty to $25,000 per unit. Another older system, which is not very popular, is to offer grain-free choice with a magnetic feeder, which simply means any cow that contains a magnet or a chain walks in the stall and she automatically is dispensed concentrates based on her appetite and containing the key, in this case, the magnetic feeder. This is a very expensive way of feeding grade, and some cows would overeat. Another way is to provide some or all the concentrate in the milking parlor, which means as the cow is standing in the parlor to be milked, grain is dispensed into a bowl or feeder in front of the cow based on a constant amount or how much milk the cow is given. The most common way to feed concentrates and increasing in popularity in the U.S. is total mixed ration, which means we mix all the concentrates and forages together, make a casserole, if you wish, out of it, and let the cow eat as much as she wants. And, of course, as you can anticipate, we could have combinations of these five systems listed above. Well, that concludes our discussion on concentrate feeding systems. Thanks, and have a good day.